Welcome to the Team Engagement Podcast, where leaders of teams share their insights. We discuss six questions in nine minutes because leaders know how to be concise. Let's get started with our guest today. Our first question, in a few sentences, tell us who you are and what you do. Well, thank you for having me, Sean, and hello to all your listeners. I'm Natalie Bourne, and I'm the Vice President of Innovation for Territory Global. So we're a team of consultants and designers that focus on strategy, transformation, storytelling, innovation, and it's all built around human-centered design. So, um, you know, my personal background, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, and um, I've had the pleasure of working in probably over about 20 countries in my career. And so um, the host of my very own podcast as well called the Innovation Meets Leadership Podcast. That is fantastic. You are definitely a busy lady. <laughs> <laughs> well, question number two, what's the best thing about working with a team? Oh man. So I say this all the time to, to folks, but innovation is no longer about brilliant individuals. It's about brilliant teams. So the best thing about, I think, working on a team is the ability to create psychological safety on a team. And there are so many benefits that we get from psychological safety once that's created. And so it's one of those things when you have it, you can say, you know, I can take risks without fear of insecurity, judgment, or embarrassment. I can put an idea out there. It doesn't get shot down. Um, and I believe that we can play a role in as being transformational leaders and helping other people to take this journey to create psychological safety on their teams. And it's not just the team that you lead, it's also the team that you're on. So your peers as well. We have to have it in both places. Otherwise, we don't have the credibility we need in an organization in order to have those ideas seen, heard, and invested in. And so that's really where I like to focus is on creating that emotional intelligence, that psychological safety, and helping people feel like there's not um, a fear of failure. We need to remove workplace fear. And I, I believe safety is one of the ways that that happens. I love those ideas. I'm sitting here nodding emphatically because I agree so much <laughs> with what you're sharing. Great insights. Thank you. Question number three, I hear from leaders of teams that it can be a challenge to get team members engaged. Tell us your thoughts on that. Yeah, you know, so much work has been done on this topic. So it's always a hot topic to talk about engagement. We know that, you know, somewhere between 65 and 70% of the workforce is not engaged. Those numbers go up and down. I'd be interested to see what they look like in the midst of a pandemic right now. Right. But I would imagine a lot of people are pretty, you know, stressed out and, and they're kind of burning the candle at both ends. But, you know, I think that there's a really important question we can ask our teams in the season. And that's, you know, do you need to remain steady? Or are you looking to grow and be promoted? And I think that based on how the person answers, that depends on how we tailor our, you know, what we want to help them with. And so I think it's important that we help our team members express themselves, that we help them understand, you know, you won't be penalized if you're in a season where you just need to remain steady. But if you are in a season where you're ready to grow, we also as leaders need to help team members make that growth stretch possible and whatever that looks like. So I believe lack of engagement always comes from not asking the right questions. And there's a couple of things that I always look at on teams. It's can we be more flexible with our employees? Can we tailor the engagement plan to them as individuals? Not just the, here's the catch-all engagement plan we're gonna give to everybody, but really tailor that to them. And then how do we increase trust and candor? And the last thing is, which I feel is really important is we have to train our leaders to be leaders. Most people are thrown into leadership and they're never trained on what that looks like to actually have hard conversations and to lead people through change and to lead, especially right now, people through really hard times. Great comments. And you're absolutely right. There's so many people that do, that do get thrown into a position, they get promoted, but then we don't prepare them for what's necessary to be great leaders. Thank you so much for sharing those yeah. points and for making those points of emphasis. I think that's great information. Question number four, what other piece of advice do you have for leaders of teams? You know, it's it's interesting. I've been in organizations where, uh, in the organization I grew up in, we were taught how to fail. Um, we were taught to fail fast, fail cheap, <laughs> and fail often. So we were always experimenting and trying new things. Um, when I went to other organizations later in life, and especially becoming a, a consultant, you learn that not all organizations hold that same, uh, you know, mantra in regard. So a lot of times you get into the organization and failure becomes fatal. And that's not okay. I think we have to help teams and organizations figure out how to fail fast and fail cheap and fail often. And it's interesting, you know, my, my children take martial arts, they take Krav Maga. And one of the first things they teach you is how to fall. 
So the very first thing you learn in there is how to fall and then how to get back up. And I think the same should be true in leadership and in business. We have to teach our teams how to fall gracefully and then how to get back up quickly, be resilient and move forward. And so, um, you know, it's, it's funny. I had a friend that had never publicly spoken before. And the first day of their job, they had to get up in front of a thousand people and introduce themselves. And there was no coaching that went into that uh, happening before they got on stage. And so to me, that felt like so much pressure for someone who's never done it before. And that's oftentimes how leadership is too. You're thrust into this position and you're not trained, you're not um, taught what you need to do. And then you're just kind of sinking out there. And so we need to bring people along in a way where they can incrementally grow and learn so that when they're in those positions of pressure, they've already been taught how to fail fast and fail cheap. Wow, great advice. That is it's such an important message to learn how to fail fast, fail cheap. I like that part too as well, but uh, great words of advice. Thank you. Question number five, what other successful leaders of teams would you like to recognize that have been a positive influence in your life? So I have so many people along the way that have been positive, but early, early in my career, there were two leaders that I worked for and they both uh, really invested in me and helped me to see the potential even in myself. So the first one is Mike Hargis and he was one of the best leaders um, I've ever worked for. As a matter of fact, I remember when I worked in his department, we had this tree and it showed all the different people that had been promoted to other areas because of his leadership. And I don't remember how many people were on there, but it had to be somewhere between 60 and 100. And so his impact was just felt by everybody that he led. Also, Jamie Silva was an early mentor for me that just taught me a lot around business acumen and how to pull a presentation together, how to speak to people with confidence. But the two people I want to call out really specifically is my mom, who was the first female entrepreneur I'd ever met. She owned a business growing up. So it was really cool just to see her be successful as a, a woman. I didn't even really get to see a lot of women in leadership until much later in my life. So that was a really cool thing to see. And then also my father who instilled a lot of courage in me to really think about how to push myself, how to push myself mentally and emotionally when I would get tired or just worn out. He really came in and, and just kind of helped me to push that last mile. So I just, I love them because they've been some of the most incredible um, leaders in my life that I've gotten to watch from, you know, up close and personal. Thank you so much for recognizing all of them, but especially your mom <laughs> and your dad for the influence that they've had. I absolutely love it when the guests mention mom or dad or another family member that's had a positive influence on them. So thank you so much for recognizing yeah. them. Last question. Tell us about your first job. Oh my goodness. So, so this is a little funny, but when I was like 16 or 17, I would actually leave work early to go, or I'd leave school early to go to work. And it's because my brother, um, I kind of just did whatever he did. So every year he would go to summer school to get ahead in school. So I just did the same thing because what else was I going to do? Sit around the house by myself. So I would go to school with him and take some kind of classes. And so what ended up happening for both of us as we got towards, you know, 11th and 12th grade is we didn't have any classes in the afternoon. So I'd actually just leave high school early and go to work. And so I worked at this 3D image printing company and we sold 3D cameras and pr printed 3D images. And this is like back in the nineties, which was kind of cool that we even had that, but, um, but we would do that. And it's cool because at a very early age, I just learned the value of money and time management and had just really great jobs from a very early age because um, of learning those principles while I was still in high school. Wow, that's a great story. Thank you for sharing your, your experiences with your first job. And yes, that was rare back in the 90s to have 3D printing. Absolutely. So that's great experience. Natalie, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. How can people find you? Yes. So if you'd like to work together, uh, Territory Global, and then my personal uh, Instagram is Innovation Meets Leadership, as well as my Facebook. And then uh, you can find me on Twitter at Natalie M. Bourne. Fantastic. This is Sean Richards with the Team Engagement Podcast, where leaders of teams share their insights. For more ideas, you can go to teamengagementpodcast.com. Again, that's teamengagementpodcast.com. Thanks so much for joining us today and have a great day.